This is Adjuster TV, Adjusters First. This video is sponsored by Hague Education. Use code Adjuster TV to get a 15% discount on damage assessment, CE training, industry certifications, books, and tools at HagueEducation.com. Let's talk about roof repairability for just a few minutes, okay? This is something I think that um, gets a little bit uh, confusing in a lot of ways. And I think that there, there's, some, there's some factors and some sort of like some important things that I think an adjuster needs to know about doing roof repairs versus roof replacements and, uh, and the brittleness test and things like that. And if the roof is repairable or not, um, that can keep them either from um, leaving money on the table because they didn't replace a, a roof that they should have because it really wasn't repairable or by getting themselves in hot water by running around and saying that everything's not repairable even when it's only two years old and it's in it's in fine shape and shingles available and everything else right basically when we talk about roof repairability what we're talking about is uh if the shingles are manipulated by somebody if you, if you only find enough damage to write for a repair if the shingles are in a condition uh, to where if the, if the installer or the technician or whoever's doing this repair on the roof starts to manipulate the other shingles in order to, to pull out the old shingle and stick a new shingle in, if, they, if he's breaking more of them um, and causing more damage and has to replace that one and has to replace, every time you lift a shingle, it busts off and cracks off, um, then that roof really isn't, isn't repairable. And, you know, if they stuck with it, maybe they could do a repair if they were super hyper careful. Um, but it's probably more cost effective just to tear off the, the older roof and put a new one on, right? Um, or, or just the slope, right? And it just depends. And there's a lot of different situations here and, and every carrier is different about how they want you to do this kind of thing. So you have to, like I said, attend those carrier certifications and, and know the, the estimating guidelines and know how to find stuff in there and, and, and know that you have to look in there for these kinds of things, right? So the brittleness test or roof repairability is something that's gonna factor pretty heavily in a lot of carriers estimating guidelines, right? What the brittleness test is, is, is a test, right? Where you take the shingle and we'll use this mouse, this trackpad thing, and you, you lift it so that it's on the roof like this, right? You kind of, you may, maybe have like a, a putty knife or something like that, so you kind of break the seal on it. And the brittleness test says that you would lift it 45 degrees right, which that's 90 degrees. This would be 180 degrees, right, 90 degrees. Lift it 45 degrees and if it breaks off or if you lay it back down and it, there's a crease across the top of it, then it's quote unquote not repairable. It's failed the brittleness test, right? I mean, <laughs> this leaves, I think, a lot of uh, room for interpretation, we'll say, um, but suffice it to say that's the official brittleness test according to at least one major carrier, right? And so the thing to remember is that 45 degrees, that's 90, right? Off of the per perpendicular to the roof, that would be 45 degrees. But the temperature uh, has to be 45 degrees or greater out, it's like the air temperature outside. So if it's in the, the late fall or something and it's 39 degrees outside and you, you, you pick it up and ostensibly the because it's colder the shingle is going to be more apt to be brittle right whereas if it was 85 degrees outside it would be super duper flexible right um, if it's 39 degrees 20 degrees outside and you just kind of lift it a little bit and it just cracks off well they're not probably they shouldn't accept that because it's less than 45 the temperature outside is less than 45 degrees right um, it's hard to say if you're in a situation where you know uh, okay, well, I'm, I'm on this storm and it's, it's mid to late fall and there's no snow or anything like that. Um, how am I supposed to figure out if this roof is repairable or not if I can't do a brittleness test? And I would tell you, um, don't do a brittleness test, right? Right for the repair. Um, because think about it the other way too as well. Even if the roof was a lot newer um, and it was really, really cold outside, the shingles are going to be more brittle. The, the repair may not, it may not make sense to do the repair at that time either because the shingles are too brittle. Um, I think that modern shingles and modern, you know, construction technology, um, the shingles are a little bit more forgiving in this, in this regard. Um, it's, 
it's a uh, this is kind of a tough subject to kind of like really make it make general statements on because you really have to take each house on a case by case basis and say, all right, well I can see that um, you know the the granules are all washed away, right, and the matting is exposed. I can see the the fibers of the fiberglass matting. Um, I can see where a lot of shingles have blown off. There's some old damage over here, and there's some new damage here, and the shingles are brittle. Um, and they have, you know, if I wrote it just to repair on this, it would be a thousand dollar estimate. Um, how am I going to determine, how am I going to like definitively say this roof isn't repairable or not? And it's really going to depend on what the carrier, the carrier's estimating guidelines say. And that usually on storms like this, they will say, all right, we, we know that it's cold outside. Um, so what we want you to do is just take a bunch of pictures and then call your IA team manager and say, hey, I got one I think may not be repairable and we'll see what we can do to get, get that one paid for, right? You know, we'll, we'll take a look at it with you and make that decision together, right? I personally would feel a lot more comfortable as the adjuster doing that and as, as well as the IA firm. When I was doing um, field support, field management kind of sort of quasi training on Hurricane Sandy. People on my team were, there were some brand new people and then there was experienced adjusters, but in order to, even though it was like, su like summer and it was warm outside, I had uh, they, people, if they wanted to total a roof um, that they said they felt wasn't repairable, they had to call me and I had to go out and look at it with them or go out and look at it and say, Yep, you're right. So I had to. So they had to get manager approval on it. And a lot of the times, I'm gonna tell you, um, I, I, this is and this is something I think is in the kind of a, in the plus column of adjusters, um, depending on you know from looking at it from the other perspective. Um, I became the bad guy in some cases because I'm like, dude, this is. I mean, the brittleness test. You know, we I lifted the shingle up to 45 and let it let it down, and nothing at all happened. No loose granules at the top of the shingle flipped it all the way back, laid it back down, nothing still. It's just, the, it's perfectly, it's one year old roof. It's not, it, it is absolutely repairable, right? And the adjuster gets, gets mad at me and says, well, you know, you're just trying to, I'm like, bro, <laughs> we have to prove the loss, right? I have to prove that it's not repairable. You have to prove that it's not repairable. And if this is, if it's not brittle at all, it's not breaking off, there's no Brady crease, there's no loose green, there's no nothing, no tear or anything on the shingle that we're trying to test, um, then we can't, we can't pay for it. We have to pay for a repair, right? Um, I'll go into detail on how to, to do, how to make the distinction between repairing a slope and then replacing a slope in a later video. But to suffice it to say, um, the brittleness test, I think the bottom line with this, with this whole conversation is, is for me to say, um, be aware of the brittleness test, ask about it in orientation, um, inquire about it during your uh, carrier certifications, um, ask other people, other instructors, other trainers, um, if you go to MoCAD or if you go to other schools or whatever, um, ask them about it, right? And have them give you their perspective on it. And somebody may be able to articulate it better than me. The bottom line is, is that there are rules for a brittleness test and determining if a roof is repairable or not. Um, there are a lot of cases where it's perfectly obvious and just clear as day, there's no way in the world they're repairing this. The shingles are falling apart. There's other situations where the shingles are definitely not available, right? T-locks, nobody's, you can't do T-locks anymore. And it's been that way for a long time, right? Um, but in every, every other case where there's a gray area, um, the best advice is to lean on the resources that are available to you as the adjuster. And, you know, if there's a question mark on it and you really wanna make the case that you can, you're gonna total that roof out, um, I would get a manager's get a manager's name in the file with that to say, yep, I agree with Matt or yep, I whatever, right? Um, so that's my best advice for you on that. Don't be willy nilly running around totaling roofs and being you know crank it all the way back and saying, well, this is you know it's totally unrepairable, right? And one final thing I'll tell you about this: no matter what, um, whether you're you're you know have an official brittleness test or official repairability test or not. If you're, if you're going to manipulate the shingles to kind of get a gauge for yourself, uh, or whether through it's a, like a regular test, um, 
only do it on the side of the on the slope that has damage, right? Don't go to be like, well, the front slope is, you know, it's facing the north and that's where all the wind damage is, but the back slope faces to the south and it's getting all the sun and it's falling apart. I'm gonna, and there's no damage, there's no wind damage on it, right? Then I'm gonna go back there and, and do a brittleness test and say, well, look, the roof is unrepairable. Um, you'll end up you'll end up in trouble with that. If, if you do cause damage to an undamaged slope, especially when it's not repairable, that's on you, right? You, you damage that, not the wind. Only do any kind of destructive testing, which this is really the only one that I can think of, um, to the damaged side. The same thing goes for if you need to pull a sample, right, of this shingle, if you're like, I've never seen anything like this before. It looks kind of old. It doesn't seem like it's unrepairable, but I don't know that this is even made. Only take that shingle off of the damaged slope. Same thing with siding, right? You have some hail damage on the side of the house and you're like, well, I don't think this is available or the contractor says it's not available. Take your siding sample for ITEL off of the damaged side. Don't, do not take it from another side or you're buying that other side, right? Or somebody is and, and you might get in trouble for that, right? Don't cause damage to sides of the house or slopes or rooms or whatever that don't already have damage from this particular peril, this particular cause of loss on this particular storm that you're working, right? It's kind of a sticky sticky sort of thing, and I don't want you to really rely on what I'm saying about this, uh, except to say, seek guidance from the carrier and your IA firm. Re always reach out to your IA firm team manager first, and then, you know, then kind of go from there. And they may have like really, really, really detailed rules and situations and training and instructions on how to determine repairability of shingles. Or they might not, right? But either way, you gotta find out and you and you really wanna get like, my manager said, this is how I do it, this is how I'm gonna do it, right? Not like just making it up or something you saw on the internet, like a YouTube video, right? Um, so really the purpose of this, because I don't wanna like, have you come back and say, well, you know, I got in trouble because you said it such and such. Um, you need to ask first, right? Before you make a decision like that, if it's questionable, ask. Did you know that this is just a clip of a much longer video? To watch the whole show and for a chance to have your questions answered by me, become a member at AdjusterTVPlus.com.